بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد إخوة الإسلام يا عباد الله uh, I want to take the time to just address a particular matter especially in light of what recently took place concerning the civil unrest at, uh, here in the U.S. and what occurred as a result of the civil unrest. What resulted from the civil unrest as it relates to the Muslims within the inner city, the inner city and or underprivileged areas, you found a lot of people express their opinions on matters. Uh, and in reality, you found people, you know, just really did a lot of complaining. Uh, and as usual, complaining doesn't really solve anything. Because you, there were a lot of people that went online and talked about a lot of things. But they really didn't come with any type of viable solutions. And the reality is quite simple as it relates to... Muslims striving to be upon the Sunnah and safeguard ourselves and our families from the filth that this society has to offer. That one, we have to yani, create uh, or build up, for lack of better expressions, viable communities where our interest is protected. We have to build up viable communities where our interest is protected. And so, in order to illustrate what I mean, there's a statement of Allah in Surah Al-Anfal, where he says, وَأَعِدُّوا لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَرِبَاطِ الْخَيْلِ تُرْحِبُونَ بِهِ عَدُوَ اللَّهِ وَعَدُوَّكُمْ وَآخَرِينَ مِنْ دُونِهِمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَهُمْ اللَّهِ يَعْلَمُهُمْ Al ayah to the end of the verse. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He states, and prepare for them in accordance with your ability of strength and steeds of war to strike fear by way of, of, the, of these things into the hearts of your enemies, or Allah's enemies and your enemies and others besides them that you are totally unaware of. But Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala knows who they are. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala knows who they are. This particular verse was revealed uh, in, in regards to the Muslims defending, defending themselves from the uh, transgressions of the pagan Arabs at that time. As the pagan Arab at that time, they wanted to uproot Islam from the Arabian Peninsula in totality. And so Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is telling them to defend themselves. But it's impossible for them to defend themselves without taking or making preparations that will enable them to defend themselves or arming themselves with necessary weaponry to be able to repel the transgression of their enemies that were seeking to and hoping to uproot them from the Arabian Peninsula in totality. Now this particular verse is an excellent illustration of a principle لَا يُتِمُّ الْوَاجِبْ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ فَهُوَ wajib. That if you cannot complete an obligatory affair except by means of some other thing then that thing is likewise obligatory so if it's impossible in other words if it's impossible for you to defend yourself without having the necessary equipment and or weaponry to defend yourself then acquiring of that equipment and or weaponry is likewise oblig obligatory just like defense of yourself is obligatory. This is how that principle works. And so when we're living in the West, 
there are certain needs, dire needs, that the Islamic communities stand in need of. There are certain aspects that the, the Islamic community stand in dire need of. There are certain things. In order to safeguard ourselves and safeguard uh, yani ourselves as it relates to our religion, and, and that's what for so on, and likewise safeguard the religion of our children that are coming up after us. But we have a problem if those who are talking and in positions of authority don't understand that. Don't understand that. Meaning they don't understand that we have to take the means that is necessary in order to preserve our communities. Now I want to give an example I was sent this message from our brother Sadiq Al Juniani. Uh, when he asked a question to certain people in leadership, he says, the, basically the question is, what are five essential matters, institutions that are currently needed in such and such an area that will foster or aid in the fostering of a sustainable Muslim community here in this area? Clear question. Very clear question. He gets a response from a leader. One, a strategic plan that defeats the historical roadblocks used in the USA to prevent Islamic communities from thriving. That's one. Two, adherence to the prophetic model of establishing a, an Islamic community. Three, unwavering commitment to unity. Four, reestablishing the mission concept in our da'wah. Five, embracing and showcasing our Islamic, black, ethnic, and racial identity. These answers are platitudes in reality. Now, what is a platitude for those who may be unfamiliar with that statement? A platitude is a flat, dull, or trite remark, especially one uttered as if it were fresh or profound. In other words, it's meaning, meaningless banter that doesn't establish, that, doesn't, that, that, that may, Yanni, uh, it may incite people, but this incitement has literally no direction to it whatsoever. It has no direction to it whatsoever. It's meaningless banter in reality. And so this is the problem. This is one of the problems that people don't have basic and simple solutions. They don't have basic and simple solutions. If we, were, if we were to take a look at this, now the first one, a strategic plan that defeats the historical roadblocks used in the USA to prevent Islamic communities from thriving. There are many Islamic communities thriving. When you look into the inner city, though, the Islamic communities are not thriving. And that's because the Islamic within the inner cities, the Islamic communities are not organizing that which is necessary for the community to thrive. Now, if I was to take a look at, if I was to use a, give an example of Philadelphia, for instance, there is absolutely no need for anyone to establish another masjid in Philadelphia. There are many masjid in Philadelphia. Although they may be upon varying different things, there are many masjid in Philadelphia. And it's possible for a person that's striving to be upon the sunnah to find a masjid that he could pray at and take benefit from, from classes and thus forth and so on. So the question would be, if we have having all these problems, if we're using Philadelphia as an example, if we have having all of these problems going on in Philly, what are the solutions to those problems? Well, one, the, the real solution is the creation of a viable community. Not a neighborhood, as some of the black scholarship as it relates to dunya, they make a distinction between 
neighborhoods and communities. A neighborhood is just an area that a bunch of people live in, but they have no control of it whatsoever. But a community is an area targeted by a specific group of people that they live in and the economy of that area they control. And every need of theirs is found within that community. They don't have to go outside of it to reach to to uh, uh, acquire their needs. So this is the proper answer to any question that for anybody for anyone that states what are uh, the solutions to our problems that we have to start building communities, meaning communities that will cater to the needs to our immediate needs where we don't have to go outside of this area that we've targeted in order to see some need of ours fulfilled. And so when we're looking at Philadelphia, for instance, if a person, want, if a person wants to establish anything, they should be looking at what the community is in need of that is lacking. And so one of the things in the inner city of Philadelphia what is lacking are Islamic schools. Islamic schools for the children. Why would a group of people want to establish another masjid when they know that there's no Islamic schools for the, ma for the children? Establish a, a school. Why would people be looking to establish another masjid when they know that, there is a, that, that they have problems with, with brothers and or sisters ending up homeless. Why aren't they establishing shelters? Why do the sisters have to go to Catholic shelters that try to indoctrinate them with Catholicism? Why aren't people looking at what are needs of the community that have to be alleviated and establishing necessary institutes to do away with those, to, to cater to those needs. Instead, we have people coming up with platitudes, with platitudes. You, you'll have people telling you voting and protesting and this and that. Well, statistics show that when, when you're dealing with Asians in America, people coming out of North Korea and Chinatown and like this, they have the lowest voter turnout out of out of any ethnic group within the U.S. Yet there's a Koreatown. Yet there's a Chinatown in major cities. Yet they have the lowest voter turnout, meaning they're not even significant as a voting block. Yet they have power. Is because they targeted specific areas and created communities out of them. Where, they can, where all of their needs are sufficed within the, that radius that they place themselves in. And they don't have to go outside of that radius to meet their needs. To meet their needs. Adherence to the prophetic model of establishing an Islamic community. What, what model is he referring to? During the time of the Prophet وسلم, when he went into Medina, he let the camel yani, roam into a stop at, the, at, at a spot, and that's where they built the masjid at. We're not living in a time where you can just pitch a tent and that's your land. We're not living in a time like that. We're living in a time where Cities are already established. You have to find a building, buy the building, renovate the building, and that's for so on. This is we have to be realistic with this. And so it's like I said, we already have a lot of massages. We were really using Philadelphia as an example, or any city. There are already massages available. Why don't people look at the areas that the massages are in? and start and target that area, and start to establish institutions that are needed to serve that, that, that to serve the dire needs of the community. So again, this is platitudes. 
reestablishing the mission concept in our DAO, the mission concept, uh, the the concept or the very purpose of our DAO is to guide the people, the, the people's guidance. Allah to Barak wa Ta'ala he states, La ikraha fi din qad tabayyina rushd min al that there is no compulsion in religion. Indeed, yani guidance has been made manifest and or clear from misguidance. For man yakfur bit taghut wa yu'min billah faqad istamsaka bil urwat al wuthqa to the end of the ayah. So whoever disbelieves in that taghut and believes in Allah, then he has grabbed the most trustworthy of handholds. And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala he states, Huwa alladhi yunazzilu ala abdihi ayatim bayyinatin li yukhrijakum min al-dhulumati ila al-nur al-ayah. It is he who has revealed to his servant clear verses to do what? In order for what? In order to extract them from the varying paths of darkness to the one light. The darknesses of misguidance to the one light of guidance. The mission, our mission as it relates to Dawa is clear. It's clear what we should be doing. We should be guiding the people. And guidance is of two types. I mean, uh, I mean Dawa is of two types. Atejdi with Ta'asis. Ta'asis is the Muslims guiding non-Muslims to, to Al-Islam. A tajdeed is Ahlus Sunnah, the adherence of the Sunnah from amongst the Muslims, calling the Muslims to at proper adherence to that Sunnah. And so if we're going to be given dawah and having a proper concept of giving dawah, then we have to establish institutions that are a means for us to spread dawah. From the perspective of Tajdeed and Tajdeed. And one of the greatest means, again, uh, when you go into the inner city and or urban areas, one of the biggest things that are lacking is dawah to our children. There are no Islamic schools. Everybody wants to establish a new master, but there's no Islamic schools. And this is something, now, every area within every major city may not have a mashia, so I'm not knocking the establishment of a mashia and or Islamic center. I'm not doing that. But there are some cities that are, like if, for instance, we go to Atlanta. Atlanta doesn't need another mashia there. There are an abundance of mashias in Atlanta. But there are other needs of, of the Muslims that are not being met or not being fulfilled, especially as it relates to, to, to our children. And thus forth and so on. So the point that I'm making, if any, is that we need to be people that present viable and relevant solutions to, to issues. And not just talk, yell and complain. How many times are we going to complain? Over and 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 over again. We already know what, what, what the problems are. When are we going to start sitting down and organizing the solutions? And when I say solutions, not people getting in the room and pontificating for an hour or half an hour. And by the time they leave that room, nothing was accomplished. They, they leave out in the same state that they came in at. Uh, they, that, that they came in as, meaning they had no plan prior to coming into the meeting, and after they leave the meeting, they have no plan. But they may have sat for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, and a, and a lot of things were said, and as it relates to progressing the communities, they, everything that was said was totally meaningless. Like this last example, embracing and showcasing our Islamic, black, ethnic, and racial identity. Platitude, meaningless banter. We need to be 
people that are talking about institution building and community building. All we got to do is look at the Yahoo. All we got to do is look at any ethnic group here. Any ethnic group that took that, that same position. When we look at when we deal with the Yahud, for instance, they have sections of major cities. And they're respected in their sections of, of their major cities. Because they control just about everything in the sections that they reside in. All of their needs are met right in their immediate community. They have institutions set up, businesses set up, their religious, uh, their religious uh, at, uh, buildings, any synagogues, or whatever, whatever the case may be. They have all those things set up in their in their immediate immediate locality. And they rarely go outside of their community for the fulfillment of, a, of some need. And in Los Angeles, this is exactly what Latinos have done. Well, in most cities, this is exactly what most Asians has done, ha, have done. Because again, there's a Chinatown just about everywhere in every big major city. There's a Koreatown in just about every big major city. And so the Muslims are sitting around having meetings and pontificating and, talk, and talking, and there's a lot of meaningless talk. And another 10 years go by, nothing's accomplished. So the point that I'm making, if anything, that should be taken away from this, if we're not talking about viable community building, establishing, establish, establishing institutions in specific targeted areas, but we're having plans for, for, for viable institutions that will fulfill certain needs of ours within the community. And we don't have viable resi residential procurement, pro residential property procurement plans. And we don't have viable commercial property procurement plans to set up our businesses in this in specific, specifically targeted areas. Then we're just pontificating. We're just talking out of the side of our necks. We're not really talking about solutions. We're not really talking about solutions. We already have the 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 the, the moral standard. The Kitab and the Sunnah already gives us that. So we already have the moral standard that we should be living by. The moral code, the, our code of conduct, is coming from the Kitab and the Sunnah. We have that already. Now we need institutions, we need communities, and thus forth and so on. So we need to be more than just people that are complaining about the problem. But we need to be people that are organizing in, a, in an effective manner. In an, in an effective manner. Not just sitting in the room and just talking. And Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala knows best. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.